Bible says that we would depend upon our enemies for everything. All right, come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who put a yoke of iron upon our neck? The white man. You understand? Come on. Until he have destroyed thee. Until when? Until he have destroyed thee. Are we destroyed as a people? Yeah. How so? We got to go to the, what else? What else? Yeah, you're very good. You're right. You're correct. Right? Why do we have to go to the, I, I can't hear you. Why do we got to go to the white man for everything? Why did God send these enemies upon us to curse us? Huh? We read it already. Because we didn't keep God's what? what? What you call them? We didn't keep his commandments. Very good. All right. Now, do you know what the commandments are? Do you know what they are? Let's read some commandments for you. Were you brought up in church? Who raised you? Who raised you? Your mama. All right. Did your mama teach you God's commandments? Say it again. Nah. My mama taught me some of God's commandments. She ain't teach me nearly enough to keep me out of trouble. You understand? She ain't teach me nearly enough to keep me out of trouble. I made a lot of mistakes growing up because I only knew a few of the commandments. So I can only imagine what it's like growing up not knowing none of the commandments. You understand? What you got? Read what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 28. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. That's a commandment right there. When we make cuttings in our flesh for the dead, what does that sound like to you? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? When we make cuttings in our flesh for the dead, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? What's that? Read on. P pay attention. It's going it's to give you even further detail. Come on. No print. Any marks. No what? No print. Any marks upon you. So when we make cuttings in our flesh for the dead and we print marks upon us, what comes to mind when you hear something like that? Something that we do, our people, something that our people do today, commonly. It's a common thing for us to print markings in our flesh for the dead. What's it called? You don't know? When somebody die, you might get rest in peace or something like that on your body. What's that called? A tattoo. A tattoo. So what's this Bible describing? No, ta no, ta no, no tattoos. tattoos. You understand? No tattoos. Read it again from the top. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. See, we got to use wisdom with what we're reading in this Bible. Because everything we read about isn't going to be the common language that we speak today. Right. You understand? It's not going to say, thou shalt not get a tattoo. You understand? Because that wasn't the language during this time. But what is it describing? Read it again from the top. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. When we get cuttings in our flesh from the dead, imagine sitting in a tattoo parlor and a man got a needle and he got ink in the needle, right? Does it feel good or does it hurt? My sister, does it feel good or does it hurt when you get a tattoo? It hurt, right? Why does it hurt when you get a tattoo? Why does it hurt? Why don't it feel good? Why don't it feel good when you get a tattoo? What's really going on when you get a tattoo? Think about it. When you sit down in the chair and the ink man got the tattoo gun in his hand, right? I got a tattoo, so I know how I feel. You understand? I repented from that, so I'm not getting no more tattoos, right? My sister right here, you got a tattoo? So you know what it feel like. I, my young bro brothers, right? I hope y'all ain't got no tattoos, do y'all? All right, all right, good, good, good. So a few of y'all know what it feel like to get a tattoo. So what I was telling them to say so was that it don't feel very good when you get a tattoo. It's a little pain. You know what I'm talking about? I think she know what I'm talking about. She know, she know, hey, my brother, you got a tattoo before? You know what it feel like to get a tattoo? It don't feel good. Why don't it feel good when you get a tattoo, say so? He put a needle to your body. Do you bleed a little bit? When you get a tattoo, do you bleed a little bit? Think about it. When you get a tattoo, do you bleed a little bit? Yeah, you do. Do it swell up a little bit? It get red a little bit? That don't sound like a process that feel good, right? So what are we really doing? Read the scripture again from the top. Ye shall not make any cuttings. Any what? Any cuttings. Any what? Any cuttings. When you get a tattoo, are you cutting? Are you cutting yourself? My sister, when you get a tattoo, are you cutting yourself? What you think? Say it again. I guess. Do you bleed when you get a tattoo? I didn't. I ain't gonna lie to you. You didn't. 
Most people do, right? Most people do. Why, is, why, why do they bleed when you get a tattoo? What's that needle doing? You must got some different skin. Because anytime I get a needle, I bleed all the time. I don't know what kind of skin you got where you can get a needle poked inside your skin and you don't bleed at all, sister? Huh? You must got some thick blood. Teach. Come on. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. When we get tattoos, oftentimes are we getting them for the dead? Huh? A lot of times I guess so. A lot of times I guess so. That's why you see the murals, right? That's why you see the, uh, the, 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 the dates. The rest in pieces, right? That's why you see the names. You understand? That's why you see these things, right? Right. If you don't see them, you might see a, a basketball or something to remind you of someone or something like that, right? So what are we really doing? We're reading the Bible. We're trying to show you when you read the scriptures, it's not going to say, thou shalt not get a tattoo. You're not going to read that, right? The Bible's going to tell you what you're doing that's wrong. Right. You got to find out what that is. Right? And identify it. Don't excuse yourself because it's not called a tattoo. Don't do that. All right? Because the Bible says, thou shalt not do what? Thou shalt not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Come on. Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Or print any marks upon you. So, okay, let's say the sister don't bleed. She don't bleed. All right? Maybe she ain't making no cuts. Is she? Do you print markings upon your flesh when you get a tattoo? Are markings being printed on your flesh? Yes, that's easy. Say so. Markings being printed upon your body when you get a tattoo? Remember what we read. Remember what we read, sister. You weren't here. All right, you weren't here. Hold that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 31. And I want verse 29. All right, you weren't here, sister. So I want you to listen good and pay attention to what we're reading. We're talking about why blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans are in the condition that we're in right now. Read what you got. Hold on, say so. We ain't done. Come on, read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 29. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourself. Moses said, look, I already told you to keep all my commandments. I told you to do it. But I know after I die, you understand? After I die, this great nation before me is going to go off. Y'all going to start printing markings upon your flesh for the day. Right. Y'all going to start committing adultery. Y'all gonna start worshiping idols, all right? Y'all gonna start killing each other, murdering each other. When you hate your brother, you are a murderer, all right? Moses said all of these things would happen. How did he know that? Because they were happening while he was alive. And he said, when I die, how much more are y'all gonna go to hell off? That's what we're reading right here, come on. And turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. What will befall us in the latter days? Evil will befall you in the latter days. What will befall us in the latter days? Evil will befall you in the latter days. Say so, are we living in an evil time? For the so-called black Hispanic Native Americans, is this an evil time for us? Yes, it is. Say it again. Hell yes, an evil. But wait, 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 wait. Is it an evil time for your oppressor, the so-called white man that dwells? He lives in the suburbs. If you want a computer, his face is on it. You understand? Does, is it a great time for, for, for the so-called white man in America today? The one that's ruling the earth? Is it a great time or an evil time for him? What do you say, sister? What do you say? Is it a great time or an evil time for the so-called white man? It's a great time. So it's a great time for him, but a great time for him ends up looking like what for us? Ends up looking like what for us? An evil time. All right. So what are we reading? The Holy Bible and how Moses prophesied what we live in today as a reality. Back then, it was a prophecy. Today, it has become a reality. Jeez. That's what we're trying to show you, that you are an Israelite, all right? During this time, you wasn't called an African-American. It won't know African-Americans. God was talking to the, to the Israelites, all right? He said, this is what happened to their children's, 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 children's today, right. all right? So now, you're called an African-American, and you push the Bible away. You act like this book ain't yours. You act like there's no connection to you. You act like this is not your history book, all right? But what we're reading out of it, only uh, it, it, it only represents our people. Right. It doesn't represent any other people upon the earth. 
It only represents us. This is how we know that this is our lost connection to our history. Right. This is our lost connection to our, our family book. You understand? This is our, you know how you have a family album? A photo album? This is our photo album right here. If you read it and you start to visualize your people, that's what this will become. Because this truly is prophesying about you and your people. This is truly prophesying about Christ who was a black man that had woolly hands. We don't see these images when we read the Bible. All right, why is that? Because a great evil has befallen us in the latter day. Read it again. Because ye would do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Through what? Through the work of your hands. That's what we did. How do we provoke God to eat? How do we provoke God today by the works of our hands? How do we do that today? By the works of our hands. How do we provoke God to anger? You said by not keeping the commandments, right? That's 100% right. That's exactly how we provoke God to anger. My brother right here with the head on. How do we provoke God to anger with the works of our hands? I'm gonna show you, it looks like this. Every time we go like this, we provoking God to anger. Why do you think I got my hands like this? Why do we normally hold our hands like this? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter three. I wanna show you how we provoke God to anger by the works of our hands. By the works of our hands. How do we provoke God to anger? You understand? When I hold my hands like this, usually what's going to come next? What about if I bring them a little closer to my lips? What if I bring them a little closer to my lips? What that look like? There you go. All right, I'm going to read it for you in the Bible. Come on. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. What did the Bible say? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Remember how we read earlier that the so-called black, Hispanic, Native Americans was a holy people? You're so holy that the Bible calls your body a temple. Right. You understand? A temple, would you regard that at high esteem? Or would you, you think you can just walk through it, keep your shoes on? You understand? Uh, 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 throw trash on the ground, not put it away, not clean it. You understand? Not dust it. Would that temple be holy or would it be a filthy place? It would be a filthy place. God says your body is a temple. So how are you going to take care of your body? What type of things do we do today to destroy our bodies? To destroy our temple? What do we do today to destroy our bodies? We smoke, all right? God says don't do that. Come on. No, ye not. That ye are the temple of God. God says that you are the temple of God. Come on. And the spirit of God. And what? And that the spirit of God. The Lord put a spirit inside of you. He put a spirit inside of you. You got a spirit in you. It's his spirit. You understand? But that spirit will leave you. It will leave you if you continue to do what? Break God's commandments. Right. If you continue to uh, quench that spirit. You understand? If you continue to choke that spirit, that spirit will die to leave. All right? It'll get uncomfortable and say, I can't dwell here. You understand? There's no respect for me here. There's no regard for me here. I need to go find another body to have you. I'm going to leave this one. You understand? You don't want God's spirit to leave you. Come on. And, and that, the spirit of God that dwelleth in you. And that what? The spirit of God that dwelleth in you. And the spirit of God dwells in you. You understand? So when you smoke, you understand, is that causing you to live longer or causing you to live less? It's, say it again? Why? Well, what, what does the smoking do to your body? How does it mess your body up? What does it destroy? It destroys your spirit. What about physically? Does it make your physical body more healthy and just destroy your spirit? What does it do? It, it destroys everything. Right. It destroys your physical body, your lungs. It destroys your spirit. All right? But why do we do these things? Because we're not satisfied with our reality. We want more. You understand? We want more, and we don't have solutions for why we're living this way. We don't have any solutions for it. All right? So since we have not been able to figure it out, we say, well, I think I'd rather just escape this reality and destroy this temple because I don't even know that it's a holy thing that God gave me. This is how we think. That's the wrong frame of thinking. We can't think like that. We're greater than that. What is the nation? Nation.
nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And fire!